to celebrate almost 25 years of service as deans among the three of us, we thought it would be valuable to talk about each of our individual experiences as we look at the past, the present, and the future. I would like to start uh, with a question for Terry. Terry, you were the very first dean of the newly formed College of Management 25 years ago. What challenges and opportunities did you face at that time? Wow, there, there were just so many challenges and opportunities. Um, there was so much unmet potential among our faculty, among our students, among our alumni. There was um, a lack of recognition of the excellence that uh, we had. And frankly, there was a lack of commitment of uh, Georgia Tech for helping propel the college to the recognition that it should have had. And so with that background, we had trouble even finding a dean who we wanted, who was willing to, uh, to lead us. And I was sort of the accidental dean after three failed searches. And I'm really grateful for that uh, op opportunity. Uh, one of the challenges was the building we were in was leaking tar. You know, on the top floor, we'd have cans collecting the car, the the tar, the tar. We'd have to have exterminators uh, in, in in the building, uh, and so um, you know, it was a combination of the physical plant being inadequate to match our aspirations, and the psychological stuff that went along being in uh, a facility where hot and cold were mixed up. So we'd get co hot, cold in the winter, we'd turn on the heat and it would get colder because it was mixed up. And so the opportunity to get commitment for a new building was really a big, um, a big thing. And we did that almost immediately. And the other challenge was just creating a culture of excellence and a culture of caring. And I think that um, we've done that and you have carried that to the next level. The College of Management back then that Terry passed on to me <clears throat> was in very good shape. And I was so grateful for that. Uh, and so there were not a lot of things that I saw that I looked at and said, we really should try to make a change to this, that, or the other thing. Uh, one thing that Terry started working on that we needed to continue working on was our endowment. Because if you think about the way Terry described the history when she began, and you think about all of the schools that we compete against, uh, all of our competition have been standalone business schools for many decades. We got our independence at the same time that Terry started, which meant that we were not an independent fundraising unit. And so we needed more money. Uh, Terry did a fantastic job doing that in her deanship, uh, including this spectacular facility that still looks wonderful after over 20 years. But that was something that definitely we needed to continue changing. Um, and as you know, Mariam, that has continued to be all through your deanship as well. Uh, important, the, res uh, the resources to be able to compete with other top schools. So building the endowment was one of the things that we all needed, I think, to work on changing. There were really only two things that I identified that I thought, let's try to tweak this as soon as we can. One of them was our PhD stipends because they were significantly lower than at Emory where we recruited you from. Uh, and as you know, and Terry, you know as well, in 2023, the whole country is really dealing with the fact that PhD student stipends are not a livable salary even now. So it's a challenge that has always existed, but it was a pretty pressing one at the time that I joined. Um, and the other thing that I wanted to uh, work on to tweak was the size of the staff in the undergraduate program office. Most of our competitor business schools 
have their own standalone career services team. They have their own standalone, very large, sophisticated counseling group, advising group. And we had a very small number of very talented people, fortunately, who did an excellent job, but the numbers just really needed to grow. And so there weren't a whole lot of things that I felt like we needed to change, but uh, those were a couple of them. Uh, one other area that uh, was really important, and this was one, Terry, you'll recall that you passed the baton on to me on, was, uh, and this, uh, it has a uh, component of resource generation as well. Terry's last year, I believe, as dean, she proposed and got faculty approval for our evening MBA program. And so when I arrived, uh, what we had to do was spend the next year planning the development of that program and the implementation of it, which began in the fall of my second year. And we had a team that worked on that. Uh, it really was one of the great things that I inherited from Terry and uh, the past team. Because if you think about it, here we are in vibrant, bustling Midtown, growing by leaps and bounds with this residential young professional group of people who are eager to continue their educations and maybe don't want to change jobs. And here we are in walking distance at a world-class university. And so that one was what I would, what I, Terry, would call uh, the best low-hanging fruit that you could hand me to implement because candidly what happened is that program from the year that we introduced it was a home run right down to uh, the numbers of students who signed up, it went immediately to our goals and has stayed their steady state. And again, it's not that we haven't had a team of wonderful people marketing it and delivering incredible courses and all of that, but where else would be a better environment in 2007, the year I guess we started it, to kick off an evening MBA program, one of the fastest growing, hottest urban areas in one of the hottest cities in the world. For the college was so intertwined with uh, with uh, tech uh, Tech Square. It it was about leadership. It was about entrepreneurship. It was about uh, globalization. It was uh, really part of our our strategy. Was part of the whole conceptualization and building of uh, of Tech Square. And it was really an interesting process because we were looking at strategy and physical structure and what the adjacent buildings would be like, all at the same time of worrying about the financial implications and how it was going to be funded. And that created the opportunity for us to reconnect with so many alums whose names you see on uh, on all the walls. And that um, ended up being uh, an incredibly important process. But it was clear from day one that Technology Square was going to be built around the business school. And it was not always clear that that was going to happen. The bonds for paying out the mortgage, so to speak, were let the day after the towers came down, uh, 911. And that was a real challenge. Was that going to stop the whole project? And because of a few people on the found Georgia Tech Foundation, they stayed the course. They made a little bit of changes, like making the um, hotel lease agreement so that it would reduce their re risk. But we came probably one vote close to not having Technology Square and not having the Scheller Business uh, School here. And I'll just I'll just point out one of my arguments was. Uh, that this was such an empty environment where there was a lot of crime after five o'clock at night. I said, you know, if you don't bring an academic program over there where the students are up 24 seven and it really creates vibrancy, you're gonna create like Wall Street that's empty after five o'clock. So you must have the business school. And they agreed. Mariam, you became the dean after my tenure as dean. What were some of your key priorities at the start of your deanship? Well, Steve, I should add that when I became dean, things were really in great shape. 
thanks to work that you and Terry had done, there was great momentum that the school had. I didn't have to fix anything, but I just had to build on your great accomplishments on your part and Terry's part to continue the momentum and get the school to the next level. One of the things that I noticed when I first came on, the market for an MBA degree had started to change and shift when I came on board, on board, which had key implications in two areas. One, how we go about recruiting and how we go about marketing our program and admission of the students, particularly to the MBA programs. And then the second thing was this idea that we had to really look at our curriculum as a result of a shifting market so that we, the curriculum reflects what the market is demanding. So that was a high priority for me to look at uh, and to focus on. One of the biggest challenges of your tenure was the pandemic. And as you know, I am your biggest fan in terms of the amazing leadership that you showed throughout the pandemic. I, I was blown away by that. And I personally benefited from it so much, my sanity during the pandemic and everything else. Uh, do you have any thoughts about how we navigated that period? It was really one of the hardest periods globally for everyone. Uh, and uh, of course, including us, including me and our school. I think the way we were able to navigate that major challenge the way we did and the way we came out of it even stronger was because of a culture and a community that Terry referred to. Uh, a very caring and empathetic culture came together and we did what it took to get through it by helping each other. Uh, as I think back about it, when you are going through the process, you're so busy and so engaged, you don't really think about what you're doing in terms of the challenge that you're facing. But nowadays, as I think back about it, I say, my God, I don't know how we got through it, but I'm glad we did. It really is amazing that you were so effective as a crisis leader, and it was really your leadership acumen that allowed you to lead us through that. And now that it's all sort of behind, behind us, we, we can say, oh, it wasn't much, but it was a lot. It was a lot and you were really awesome. So thank well, you. Thank you so much. Everyone, everyone participated and uh, it was really a collective effort. So, uh, and again, I built on a great base that uh, you and Steve had put together and the culture that you had created. Steve, what do you consider your legacy? Oh, you know, I was thinking of this question, and I know that if you probably, if you asked alumni, they would probably identify the most obvious thing that happened when I was dean, which was the naming of the Scheller College of Business. Uh, and that was a truly wonderful thing, but there are a couple of aspects of that that don't make me think of it as my legacy, actually. One of them is, that's Ernie Scheller's legacy. Ernie Scheller is the guy who came to us and had this passion for what was then the College of Management and the development of the College of Management. That is 100% Ernie Scheller. Uh, you, you don't get a gift like that without developing very good relationships. Uh, and that, Terry, was you and me. It was sequentially, but it was Terry and me. Because what I walked into was Ernie Scheller having already, because of Terry's development of the relationship with Ernie, he had already uh, in, uh, had given us a substantial donation for this building, and you'll see his name on the hallway there, and Roberta's name as well, uh, as well as an endowed chair that we have had for many years. Uh, and so uh, people, unfortunately, what people do is they tend to think of whoever was sitting in the deanship as the person who was responsible on the college end for that. But the day I met Ernie, he told me, I adore Terry Blum. She was amazing. And I hope you're going to continue her good work. And that was our joint success. But that I don't think is our legacy. I think it's something that I'm, I think Terry and I are both very proud of. Uh, for me, I think the thing that I think was most important was the substantial growth of the faculty. So when I arrived, I had said to the advisory board, that to be a world-class business school, you have to have a world-class faculty. And we were 53 tenure-track faculty back then. 
And we had, as we all know, we had amazing talent among those 53. We had global stars. We had superstars on the faculty. But you need the critical mass as well. And so it was a very, very big challenge, especially during the recession, to be able to grow the faculty from 53 to over 80 tenure track faculty members. And a lot of that we had to finance ourselves because during the recession and the budget cuts for years, they weren't giving us faculty lines centrally. And so uh, to me, even though I don't think that's what people think about, you know, the public thinks about, oh yeah, the college was named with that wonderful gift from Ernie Scheller. Uh, I think that's what I think I'm most proud of is the growth of the faculty. Tell us about your relationship to the Schellers mm -hmm. and how it how it developed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, we had a wonderful college, uh, back then College of Management Director of Development, Phil Spessard, who you worked with. Uh, so one thing that was, there, there were several things that were really important. One thing was that Phil had and continues to have a very, very strong relationship that he cultivated uh, with a, a lot of time that he spent with Ernie, Robert, Roberta, their wonderful daughter, Lisa, who you know well, very well as, as well. Um, and the other aspect of that relationship, if you think about uh, college namings, they don't, they don't just happen. Uh, somebody decides that they are going to make that kind of truly remarkable commitment to their alma mater because they have had lots of time uh, partnering with us. And as you know, Terry, that you had you had him on your advisory board the entire time. And I know from conversations that you and I had when the transition happened that he was one of your most trusted advisors and that he really contributed much more than his financial support, that he was really helping us solve tough questions, helping us improve the direction we were going in. Uh, and all of that slowly built relationship is one of the things that was very, very important for me because uh, Ernie already had a love for the people here, for the past leadership, for the college. Um, and so I got, I had the, the joy of many times going to visit them in Villanova, where they lived at the time. I probably visited them in Vail, their summer and winter home, almost 10 times maybe. And they would never let me stay at a hotel. I always stayed in their home because that's Ernie and Roberta. They're very, very hospitable people. And you, you get to develop such a warm, close relationship. <clears throat> it's, while I wouldn't consider the Scheller naming my legacy, as I said, that's Ernie's legacy. I do consider the relationship that we all have built with Ernie and Roberta Scheller to be maybe the most valuable thing that I got out of my time as dean here. <laughs> He's getting about, emotional. Just thinking about Terry's that. getting emotional about the show. So uh, I'll switch, gear. switch I'm gonna gears. I'm going to switch gears now. Uh, Mary, I'm so excited about you uh, becoming into your next role as a thought leader uh, on, on the faculty. And um, as we get ready for that in the next uh, few weeks, and then it will happen, I'd like you to uh, say something about what you think your most significant accomplishments have been over the nine years. So a number of things, and they were mostly built upon the great work that you, Terry, and Steve, you had done. For example, I was able to continue the good relationship with Ernie Scheller uh, and uh, really be able to work with him and get his trust and confidence. And as you know, he also provided the naming gift, Scheller Tower, actually, uh, which is going to be Tech Square Phase 3. So I was able to leverage that great work that the two of you had done and get the naming gift from Ernie again uh, for the new building. The other thing has to do, uh, Steve, you talked about growth in faculty. And again, building on that, uh, and last year, this past academic year, we hired 10 or 11 tenure-track faculty for the college. And 
I'm proud to say that we are able to attract these new faculty from some of the best and the highest business schools in the nation. Uh, so that I think is a, talks a lot about the visibility and reputation of the school. Steve talked about the growth in visibility ranking reputation of the school uh, and uh, just being able to continue that. Uh, uh, that was, I think that was something that was again, a collective effort on part of faculty, staff, and even our students, but being able to achieve that is important. And we are now, our undergrad program uh, is ranked and is in top 20 in the nation uh, for, has been for the last consecutive three to four years. And uh, so also a number of new programs. Uh, for example, we uh, launched uh, double degrees, MBA and master's or MBA or PhD in engineering, uh, in computing and in other parts uh, of uh, Georgia Tech, other colleges. So we can offer this opportunity to our students as well as to students elsewhere uh, at Georgia Tech. And we also grew some of our undergraduate programs, uh, such as the interdisciplinary undergraduate program, uh, Denning program, and made it available to everybody across the campus, uh, which was important. And we also launched uh, an MD MBA program with uh, Morehouse School of Medicine. So again, I just continued your great work and uh, tried to get it to the next level. Terry, what do you consider as your legacy to the college? My legacy is <laughs> your success. Ah. So, the success of you and Miriam and Nandush, uh, uh, after, after her. Um, I, I think that um, if I had to boil it down to one pivotal thing that really set us up for the future, it was when we were able to change the name of our master's degree to an MBA. And it may not seem like much now, but in the early 2000s, we were the only school left with an MSM and our students would have to start their interviews. Oh, it's just like an MBA. <laughs> and it was like moving Stone Mountain <laughs> to get uh, the approval to do and uh, to offer an MBA. Uh, the other schools did not want us to be competing with them, even though we have our own brand and our own, uh, we attract our own kinds of, uh, of students. But I understand uh, why they would feel um, competitive uh, about that. And the upper administration was ambivalent because it meant that it opened up the avenue for other schools to do engineering degrees. And so the issue was, are you willing to sacrifice the growth and reputation of your business school to protect your monopoly? And so there was a lot of tension th there. And uh, I had to do a lot of work behind the scenes with the other deans to uh, be prepared for the Board of Regents uh, vote. And uh, I think that that is probably the most significant because it set the stage for the executive program becoming an MBA rather than an executive master's in management of technology. It set the stage for the uh, for the uh, evening program. And I'm not even going to talk about my tricky letter that uh, <laughs> that allowed those uh, to happen. And, you know, one thing that the alumni told me after you had achieved that, and it was a gargantuan achievement is that the computer systems that the recruiters had would scan for a master of business administration. And if that degree wasn't in there, their CV got spit out. And so it was not just their ability to convince someone in front of them that this was really an MBA. We just couldn't call it that. They were getting kicked out of the system before they even got a chance to be considered sometimes because of that. So it was a huge accomplishment. Well, thank you. And that's that's part of the legacy. But I really think that it's the culture that all of us uh, nurtured and the culture of excellence among our colleagues, the culture of excellence among our, our students, the culture of caring. I think that that is really the legacy that we that we've all uh, sh shared in, and so 
thank you for all of you've done. And thank you, Terry. What are your proudest moments as a dean? You know, the change of, of the degree, anytime there was a success among our stakeholders, I would have vicarious pleasure. Anytime there was a faculty achievement, a student achievement, and those happened every day and they just became the norm. And so those were among my, uh, my proudest moments. I remember the first board meeting that we had in this building. And we had been planning the building. We finally move in. And it was amazing because people saw the embodiment of this, this building and the students in the building and the faculty in the building, the scholarship that could happen in the building. And there was such a sense of, of uh, pride. I remember the provost at the time said, what went on at that meeting? It sounded like a revival meeting. <laughs> but truly, that was a sense where everybody in the room just had an incredible sense of um, the, what could happen. You came after me. And when you arrived, it was probably the happiest day. <laughs> you know, a lot of people have heard me say that each of our success is determined by the dean that follows us. Yeah. And so I've been doubly blessed uh, with, uh, with, the, uh, two of, uh, with the two of you. So you were the second dean after me. Uh, and you've already referred to some of the growth in faculty, the growth in the uh, evening uh, MBA. But can you tell us a little bit more, the growth in the endowment, tell us a little bit more about growth at, mm -hmm. that you experienced. Yeah. <clears throat> well, there are a lot of, actually, a lot of areas. One of them is our growth in reputation. <clears throat> and I have looked at that. And I have to say, I felt a little bit bad for you, Marion, when you came in, because starting with Terry, what I had inherited was you never see growth going like this. It's never a straight line. But we did what we did see throughout your whole deanship was this. You know, you see little bumps up and down, but it was steady upward. Uh, and everybody knows that all of those rankings, they're flawed and none of them are perfect. But there's a lot of them. And when you look at all of them as a as a package, they tend to tell you something. They're not entirely bad. They have some good qualities. And yours had gone up pretty steadily, but I knew there was a lot of potential for that. And it continued to do that during my deanship. And I thought it's going to be tough for Mariam because it's possible we're starting to become an overvalued asset. And she maybe had purchased an overvalued asset and it was going to now under her watch. And so I thought you were going to really have a challenge. It's really remarkable how we have had consistent growth in uh, Poets and Quants, U.S. News and World Report, Bloomberg, even the subject matter area rankings that had grown under you and me, Terry, they're higher than they ever have been. Uh, we're number three or four now, often in some of them, whereas during my deanship, we had gone into the six and seven range and they had broken into the top 10 during your deanship. Uh, that's pretty remarkable growth. Uh, and once again, remarkable growth. I remember when I was interviewing for the deanship, one of our current faculty members, she's actually in your group, um, I had said that it was surprising to me that the business school wasn't ranked higher. She said she was surprised that it was ranked as well as it was, given the fact that we have such limited resources compared to the competition. And that really is true. One thing I think that has been pretty miraculous for all three of us is the things that this college has accomplished with when we compare the resources that we have here to when we do the spreadsheets, limited resources. Uh, it's, uh, it's pretty amazing how that all happens. So that's one I would add to that, Terry. Size of the faculty and resources and previous year's rating explained like 90% of the variance in ratings. So there wasn't a lot of room for you guys, but- Not a lot, yeah. You know, you, you're, both of you are the story of a positive second derivative. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the rate of change had, had so I'll just call you the second ah. derivative. <laughs>